Gibraltar Today with Jonathan Scott. Thank you for joining us live on Radio Gibraltar and also on GBC Television from now until 2. It's ME Awareness Day, a chronic disease with a wide range of symptoms. It's also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. It can be disabling and it's a complex illness which affects an estimated 15 to 30 million people worldwide. And sufferers are campaigning for increased investment in research in ME. And Sarah Cumming is one of those people. And uh, she's joining us live here at Broadcasting House. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Lovely to have you. Um, How are you feeling? I'm okay today. (laughs) Yeah, today's a good day. (laughs) But you have your ups and downs. I have my ups and downs. It's a very fluctuating illness. It, um, you know, it can... The main uh, symptom is uh, post-exertional malaise, which means that every activity you do, there's a, there's a consequence. So I have a shower. It takes me an hour and a half to recover from having a shower. Goodness, really? So you, I need help at the end of my shower <laughs> to get out, to, you know, to get dressed again. You know, so it's, it's, it's very disabling. And um, I've had it since, I was, since 1998, since I was 15, so 25 years. I've lived most so of my life. So you're, you're, you're young. Yeah. But, but it, it's had a very disabling effect on you. Yes. I had to leave school early, even before the end, you know, before they aged to leave. Before, like before yeah. you finished your, your yeah. A-levels. Yeah. Um, so I got sick in 98 in December. And by May, I still wasn't better. So then things started pick, picking up and sort of like investigating and seeing what it is that's gone on. And it took two years to get a diagnosis. And once you got, once you get the diagnosis, you wonder, well, okay, it's good to know that it has a name, but then there's no cure. So now what? None whatsoever. So you, then what? <laughs> See, so so um, I'm not surprised that it took two years because it is uh, from the little bit of reading that I've done uh, before this interview, um, by all accounts, uh, a complex illness. Yeah. So, um, so, so did you find it difficult to arrive at that point two years later where you knew what it is? Yes, it, um, the fact that I was a teenager didn't help. Because you say, oh, teenagers are lazy, they just, just don't want to get out of bed. But the thing is that I couldn't get out of bed. It's not that you didn't want to, <laughs> Not you that I didn't want to. I used to play tennis, I used to play basketball, netball, and I couldn't do those things. I wanted to, um, but I couldn't. So it was, um, it took a long time to get there because you have to eliminate lots and lots of illnesses before you reach that diagnosis and um yeah once you're there you're just wondering what's next and all you can do is pace yourself during the day you sort of if you're gonna do an activity you rest beforehand and if you're gonna and rest afterwards you know like this morning <laughs> you, you see me now i'm i'm with my makeup on i'm dressed but it took a lot out of me it, and out just two hours ago i was literally lying in bed so um, in an hour's time, I'll be back in bed <laughs> trying to recover from the exertion of of this, of just having an interview, <laughs> just but having a chat. You, you yeah. felt it was important because it, it is ME Awareness Day and, and, and from your social media, I know that it's something that you're, uh, as well as um, suffering from the illness, you're passionate about raising awareness about it. Well, it's the least I can do because... Um, you know, there's nothing else I can do from my bed but go on social media and uh, and sh- and share information there. It's one of the least researched illnesses uh, around. Only one percent of UK funding goes to ME. When you compare that to other illnesses, you know, it just it's minuscule. So just like fifty pence. <laughs> and it's um, impacting millions of people worldwide. Yeah. And from what you've told us, potentially it's having a profoundly negative impact on their lives. Yes. Um, you can have mild ME. You can have very severe ME where you're lying in a bed, being tube bed in darkness. So it's, as you say, it's a very broad and very fluctuating illness. You know, one day I can do something, tomorrow I can't. So, you know, it, it fluctuates even hour by hour. So, 
And that, yeah. and that sounds extremely challenging, but I get the sense that you are at a stage in your illness that you know how what you can do and what you can't do and how long it'll take you to recover from the things that you do do. Yes, I think it's taken taken 25 years to to get to this point but um there's you know there's a limit of self-care and sort of like if i want to go for a manicure i i really feel i deserve it because i just you know so it'll take me two days to recover from the outing but i do it because i feel like a treat and i feel like i deserve to and who doesn't like nice nails <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you know um it, it's it's just life <laughs> it's life for me unfortunately um but for somebody who perhaps is at an earlier stage in the illness and is still coming to terms with what it means what would your advice be to them accept it be angry be frustrated but accept it accept your boundaries accept where you, what you can do and what you can't do and um you know just try have your frustrated days you know have your cry outs and then i still have them 25 years later you know i still have days where like for example my dad got the gibraltar medal i wasn't able to go that day because i was too unwell to see him receive it so you miss out on social things you miss out on life but you know just live within your boundaries and what's your you know what you what, what you to, are able to, to do, do. No? yeah okay um so you've highlighted the lack of investment um what about in recent years we we've seen a lot of people uh, unfortunately suffering from long covid um is that going to complicate things further when it comes to an already difficult path in getting the diagnosis for people who yeah. have me well what we can say now this early on from after all those people with long covid already half of the people with long covid meet the criteria of me so because it's a, it's induced by a virus um i got a or an infection i got a chest infection that was what kicked my illness off wow so it was a <laughs> just one of those things uh, so an ordinary chest infection which then gets complicated an ordinary chest infection and i never recovered so you know for someone who's got covid who's still dealing with it now um they're going to be learning how to pace how to um live their lives with limited you know within their limits and um Now I I know because my 8-year-old daughter is a massive fan of um of Florence Nightingale <laughs> that she lived her last years bedbound. Yeah. And um what I've learned now is that she is believed to have suffered from Emmy. Yes, and that's why we celebrate Emmy Awareness Day today which is her birthday. Um because she had these all these symptoms that mirrored Emmy we've chosen that day to to make awareness of that phenomena. Well, thank you so much. I know I didn't know beforehand, but um uh, it's um it's a real pleasure to to think and an honor to think that um uh, given the difficulties that that it um it will present you for the next few days maybe um that you've chosen to to come here to talk to us uh, about this and and to help us learn a little bit more about ME um and and chronic fatigue syndrome um let me ask you before we let you go sarah to to look ahead to sunday because uh, i think you've got a fundraiser yep it's blue sunday and it's a fundraiser started by a lady called anna in the uk um and what you do is you buy yourself a, or have your cup of tea uh with <laughs> a piece of cake or brownie in my case and uh blue cutlery because that's uh, not cutlery plates <laughs> so yet so whatever and uh you you donate your caf- your cost of tea of cake or what you'd pay in a cafeteria sure. to an ME charity so you can go to the slowlane.com and donate there brilliant okay um thank you so much for joining us uh, sarah i think i i understand ME better 
uh, and I hope that um, our listeners and, and viewers do as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So thank you for raising awareness and best of luck um, managing the illness. Thank you very much. You're listening to Radio Gibraltar. We're live until two o'clock on Gibraltar today. and. Uh...